Hey there, Dengas Chu here. Today's video is about servicing the electric primer from a Johnson Evinrude outboard and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Before we get started, we'll talk quickly about what these prime systems do. So this is a sort of a modern equivalent of what an old style choke used to do. So on an old carburetor, you'd have the throttle plate at the back there. So as the throttle opens, you know, you get higher RPM, more air. Then at the front, you have this very similar butterfly valve, but it's designed to be set in certain positions. This one's actually got a whole range of detents down this side. So you can set it and leave it at a certain, either fully choked, fully open, or somewhere in between. The idea here is that it obstructs or chokes off the air coming through the front of the carburetor. Then, as the piston goes down in the engine, it tries to draw in, it can't. It creates a really low pressure system inside the carburetor, which draws a lot of fuel up. So it's a way of adding a lot of fuel to the mixture, making it richer, and making it easier to start a motor that's cold. The idea there is the more fuel, the more it turns to vapour, the more it's actually available to burn. Once the engine's warm, the fuel turns to vapour much more readily and you don't need it to be so rich to run. The trouble with this system is that even when it's open, you still have a bit of an obstruction in the front here, so it's not as efficient as it could be. People eventually said, hang on, let's get rid of the choke plate altogether, keep that clear, and find another way of helping with cold start, and that's what this does. All these do is have fuel come in through the large barb here and send fuel out through the two smaller barbs under a couple of conditions. In normal run mode, which is when this little valve is pointed up along the body of the prime start, the fuel shut off. So that's your normal, the engine's warm, leave it as it goes. In that mode, if you send power to this purple wire, I think it was purple, it used to be purple anyway, a solenoid inside here opens and lets fuel flow from the large barb to the small ones whilst the solenoid's activated. That's activated by pushing the key in generally. So as you're cranking the motor, you push the key in, activates the solenoid, you'll hear it click, and you're getting that extra bit of fuel you need to get it started. Then when you let go of the key, the solenoid closes, and you're just running on the normal mixture provided by the carburetor. You can override that by going into a start position by turning this valve away from the body of the solenoid, in which case fuel will flow in and out permanently. What this means is the solenoid inside here cannot be working, you can manually turn it, start the boat, come back, shift it into a run position. You might also be in a situation where the carburetors have blocked up with something and you can leave it running like this. It's the only way you're going to get fuel into the engine. Might be enough to get you home. Under this little cap, while we're looking at it, is a Schrader valve inside here, which is like a one-way valve from a tyre tube. And this is a way that you can inject substances into the fuel system, such as decarbonizers, cleaners, fogging for winterization, all that kind of stuff. Johnson and Evinrude sell the individual components for these fuel pumps, but Sierra actually sell a little repair kit that contains the whole top end of this, which is the most fragile section. MarineEngine.com kindly sent me this so I could do the video on this one, so thank you for that. And also thank you for everyone else who signed up as a patron on Patreon. That's really appreciated. It's certainly going to help a lot. If you're looking to do this job, this is the part number. I'll also put a link to this kit on the MarineEngine.com website so you can grab one yourself if you need to do this job. The first test I would always recommend doing on anything you're diagnosing is just a visual inspection. And this one fails pretty miserably in that department. Hopefully you can see on camera, but the casing's cracked along here. The lever here is also cracked along here. So we've got quite a lot of physical damage to the casing. There's not much point me throwing this whole new top valve section onto this solenoid if it's not working. So what I'm going to do first is actually test the solenoids working, then we'll go ahead and if it is working, put the kit on. The main test of the coil and the solenoid, according to the service manual, is that we set our multimeter to ohms, then I'm going to attach one lead to one and one to the other, and we'll see what reading we get. I'm ending up with about 4.5 ohms. And that's the resistance coming through the coil in the solenoid. The service manual says you should have 5.5 ohms, plus or minus 1.5, so we're in spec. The way a solenoid works is it's an electromagnet. An electromagnet is simply a coil of wire that you pass current through. When you pass current through, it induces a magnetic field. If that coil is either broken, has a really high resistance, or has a short, a really low resistance, it's not going to work. So 
The fact that it's in spec gives me reasonable confidence it's going to work as an electromagnet. What I'm going to do, however, though, is just hook this auto probe up to this battery and then when I activate it, see if I can hear it click. These auto probes are great because as well as being able to measure voltage, you can supply current. So we're going to do that to see if we activate this. I'm just going to clip the earth onto the ring here. Put the tip of the probe onto that purple wire. And then if I hit the button here, we can hear the solenoid activating. So the solenoid side of things is checking out pretty well, which is great because the kit we've got replaces pretty much everything else. Also, it's worth mentioning before we go any further that some of the older style primer solenoids just have a straight lever. They don't have this Schrader valve on the front. So if you use this kit, you're actually sort of upgrading to this newer style that allows you to introduce various fluids to the engine to either clean it or fog it for winter, etc. In this kit, you get a new top plate, which is where the valve goes, the valve itself with an O-ring around it and the cap and the Schrader valve and a new gasket. This particular valve was leaking badly through the lever, so obviously the O-ring here is gone. It hasn't actually torn, but it's just quite hard and really squashed down and was no longer sealing. The other thing that breaks very commonly with these prime solenoids is these little outlet barbs. You can see here one of them is broken off. So just be careful when you're putting the hoses on that you don't break the ones on your new one. The cap for these is just held on with four flathead screws in the top, so we'll take those off. This whole part of the arrangement we're getting rid of, including that old diaphragm. We've got new ones of everything here. But before we go on, I'll show you how this actually works. So fuel comes in here, and if we take this pin from the solenoid and its ring out, fuel comes through here that actually comes through a little filter. Let's see if we can get this out. There we go. So this could actually use a bit of a cleanup too. It's got a bit of brown gunk in it. So you can see there's a bit of color here. So I'm actually gonna get some alcohol and just clean this out before I put it back together. And then this is a little bit of a mesh filter. This is the mesh filter that the fuel passes through as it comes into this, into this section. This I'm just gonna spray now with a bit of brake cleaner and some compressed air. Just gonna use a little bit of carb cleaner, clean this out. So cleaned out with a bit of carb cleaner, filter back in, and then the center pin for the solenoid in. So what happens is the fuel comes in through this section and then goes through the filter into the center section where this pin is. The diaphragm then seals against that wider section of the plastic pin here. And that stops the fuel flowing through and then up past this diaphragm. So when this is on top, The spring is pushing that pin against this rubber diaphragm, blocking it off. If we then supply power to the solenoid, the electromagnet will then pull that pin down, which then allow fuel to flow from one side of the diaphragm to the other. And then when the magnet lets go, the spring pushes it back out. Then on this top plate, you can see that when fuel is allowed to flow past that pin, it comes up and then just forks off to both these outlets. This little valve mechanism just pushes into here and I'll show you how that works. I'm gonna use a little bit of two-stroke oil because, well, that's what these run on. Just to lubricate the shaft and the O-ring a little bit. When this valve's in, you can imagine this needle coming up through the diaphragm and into here. And it's in that up and blocked off position. If you turn this valve, it gets to a section here that's higher. If I pull this one out. The idea with this valve and its manual mode is the pin can be all the way down blocking the fuel off like this. And then as you rotate it, it curves around here to a higher section that pushes the pin in like this. So when it's on this section, the pin can be extended. And when it's rotated to this section, the pin's pushed up. That little lever, as it pushes against the pin, does exactly what the solenoid does, except rather than being momentary, 
whilst ever the levers in the start position, the pins pushed up, the fuel can flow. Putting it back together is pretty straightforward. We've got our solenoid pin and everything back in. This diaphragm has a raised section on one side, which is the side that goes down towards the solenoid itself, but it doesn't matter which way it goes after that. This cap probably doesn't matter which way it goes either because all it does is come into the center and come out to the edge, but most of the ones I've seen have been oriented so that all the outlets and inlets are on the same side. Then what I'm gonna do is just put these screws in and just get them started. Then I'm just gonna have a quick look around and just make sure the diaphragm's seated well on all sides. Then just run it down going around a little bit on diagonals. The idea here, like all these kinds of things, is that you want to have them tight enough so the diaphragm doesn't leak. You want to do them up evenly, a little bit at a time, so that it doesn't buckle, and you don't want to do it so tight that anything breaks. What I'm gonna do now, before we call this good and consider it ready to go back on the outboard, I'm just gonna use this little pressure pump just to test that the valve is actually working. It's not an awesome seal, but I can actually just press this plastic bit up against the inlet for this. And if I just give it one pump, you can see it's holding reasonably well. And then if I turn the valve, pressure comes out. So given this one's now passed pretty much every test, I think we can consider it good to go. A few other related things can go wrong. The outlet hoses from the barbs here are quite small, so they can get blocked, so you might need to make sure they're not blocked at all, clean them out with alcohol, whatever. And they can also get kinked, so often they can get pinched behind things if someone's a bit careless when they're reassembling the outboard, or they just get kinked because they turn too tight a corner. So there are a few other things to check for. The other thing is you might find that when you push the key in, current's not reaching this wire, so you've got a problem with the wiring between the forward controls and the solenoid itself. So that's something else that could be a problem. All right, well, thanks for watching. I hope this helps you if you're having trouble or want to service the primer on your outboard. We've got plenty more kits to go through, though, with this particular outboard. We've got a carburetor kit for it, a fuel pump kit, a water pump kit, so lots more to do on this outboard. I'm going to continue disassembling the lower unit. I was actually planning to do that today, but I need to find the right size threaded rod to pull the bearing carrier out. So I'll grab that during the week and we'll push on with the lower unit next week. All right, well, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you.